Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Chatting the Pictures. My name is Kara Finnegan, and I'm a writer, teacher, and historian of photography. And I'm Michael Shaw, the publisher of Reading the Pictures. Happy New Year, Michael, 2019. <laughs> what visual gifts will we get this year? One, one, uh, one almost shudders to think. <laughs> I'm sure it will be abundant. Yes, indeed, indeed. Um, so we've had a, a couple of weeks of a, of a holiday break, but you know, uh, our eyes keep looking, right? So should we just dive into, uh, dive into this week's excitement? Yep, I would say so. All right, cool. So uh, our first segment this week, as usual, is called the news. And in this segment, we talk about a photo that um, tells a news story in a particular way. And so here is this week's photo. And uh, Michael, you'll have the caption and the photographer information for us. Yeah, the photo was taken by Craig Ruddle from the AP. It was in an AP slideshow. He also put it on his Instagram feed. And it simply reads, embracing a, in quotes, very rainy new year in New York with lots of affection. This is a lovely photo. Um, it it captures so much and it, and, and it rewards multiple looks. I think the first glance for me, it was, oh, it's the stereotypical Happy New Year's Eve, Times Square, you know, kissing at midnight kind of thing. Um, but there's really a lot more going on. And, and it to me, it's, um, you know, really centered on that uh, kiss between this beautiful couple in their uh, pink and blue rain ponchos. Uh, yeah. A lot of gender things happening here. I mean, to me, what was so interesting is that the ponchos are very stereotypical, right? We think of pink and blue, boys and girls. But the actual gender identity of the couple, I think, is a little more um, ambiguous than that. Uh, the the pink-clad person, um, uh, is probably a woman based upon the hands and the fingernails. And the but arm beyond and the, that, and what she's wearing and their left yeah, arm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But beyond that, it's it's kind of wonderfully ambiguous, uh, mm -hmm. and and I really love that. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. What I love about this photo, I, I agree with everything you said totally. Um, it, this photo in our news section is totally a news photo. That's what I think is great because. People are so excited and dying to get out of 28. Yes. So <laughs> I will stand in the rain for hours <laughs> just so this, so this year will end. The New Year's was news. And, you know, the, and, and where you get a lot of straight news in this picture is that all the documentation of the ball dropping. So even as this woman is kissing or this person is kissing this other person, you know, she's holding up or the, the, the um, screen and you have other screens, you see the ball dropping. So it literally documents New Year's Eve, the, 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 the changing of from one year to the other. Um, and, but at the same time, it's like, yes, yes, and that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, and it's so, um, I mean, to, to kind of, you know, use a phrase the kids like to use, it's so 2019, right? I mean, it's the, you know, the, again, the kind of wonderful uh, gender ambiguity of, of the couple who, by the way, are just clearly completely absorbed in each other as yeah. they are simultaneously documenting this giant event featuring yeah. you know, hundreds of thousands of other people. So that's very 2019 to me, but the presence of the cell phones, right? And then, I mean, your comment about the year, people needing the year to end to me is really um, embodied in this kind of combination of the rain and the confetti. Uh -huh. So you've got the, there, there's, a, a sense, uh, at least what looks to me like confetti, right, coming down on the right side of the picture. But it's this horrible, awful, presumably kind of cold, nasty weather all at the same time. And that kind of juxtaposition of that visual sense of, you know. Weather um, and storm. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, so so uh, you're right, though, as a news photo, it this you would be like, why is this news? But it's exactly it's the story. Yeah. Well, there's other I project other things into this. And I, and I say that specifically like that. But, you know, if the politics has just drenched us or inundated us and we need to get away from it. You know, the fact that you've got, you know, everything's been red and blue, red and blue, red and blue. And so the fact we're now going pink and turquoise to turn the corner, I think it's <laughs> lovely and, 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 and again, hopeful. And then I also think we're talking about the hope of the, you know, of the youngs and, and maybe 
that's partly because of the turnover that happened in the House of Representative today and everyone's getting sworn in. But, you know, when you look at that, by the way, if you look at the sign in the background, I think it's an ad for Ernst & Young. But there's mm-hmm. the word young right there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just That's like, true. please, yeah. I'm like, I'm just channeling all of this, you know, right, desire right. for hope, change, and love. So that's Yeah, I was just going to say, this right might there. say more about you than it does about the picture, right? There is always <laughs> that component, like, like what we need at the dawn of the new year. Yeah, yeah. so it's a great kickoff. Yeah, yeah. So shall we move on and talk about uh, our next image, which we uh, uh, like to call the look? Yep. And uh, here is this week's look. So this photograph was taken by Nick Oza uh, from the Arizona Republic. And the uh, caption reads, Immigration Customs and Enforcement dropped off more than 100 migrants, mostly from Guatemala, at the Phoenix Greyhound bus station. Um, and then it says at Buc- Buckeye Road. Uh, Robert, Roberto Ramirez, six, was in ICE custody, uh, custody with his father, Gaspar Ramirez. He claims that treatment by officers was bad and children were getting sick because of cold weather. So besides just mentioning that this really stuck out to me for a second as possibly the uh, TWA flight center at JFK uh, in terms of its architectural impact or power, um, yeah, I'll I'll defer to you in terms of some of your thoughts on it. Yeah, you know, in 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 this segment when we talk about the look, we talk about um, you know selecting a photo that somehow pushes the visual boundaries or illuminates aspects of a story or, or an idea in particular ways. And and Oza's photo really does it here. Um, it's it's performing a kind of visual trick on us in a mm-hmm. way that loops us back into the key story. So I. Uh, as you pointed out, this is a group of migrants who were dropped off at a bus station. Churches were full or filling up. Um, ICE does not have space. There's anxiety and concern um, about people getting sick, as you said. Uh, and so what Oza does here is essentially visually reference, I think, where the families have come from and what they've been dealing with, in addition to actually documenting the space where they are. So, you know, the child, um, you know, uh, is presumably hanging out underneath between these benches as kids like to do wiggle around and little spaces that fit them. Uh, but, but it's framed in such a way as to, as to really, you know, uh, invite us to think about the other places where this child has been. Yes, like a um, cage. Right. Caged, um, locked up, um, mm-hmm. you know, um, put behind bars or walls in various ways. And so I think mm-hmm. it's really, um, it's it's clever, and I don't mean in a kind of um, easy one-off way. I think it's a really smart, clever way to both put us in the place where uh, these migrants are now, and also get us literally to think about um, where they've been, and and also right where they're going, and the uncertainty of that. And I think you see the uncertainty and and uh, in the faces not just of the boy, but of the people you can see in the background. Yeah, well, yes and no. I mean, I, I, again, I may be just projecting and it's my New Year's, you know, optimism, but uh, like that first photo, but the boy's face to me, it's upward looking, uh, you know, literally, and also inquisitive. And I think that the contrast between that expression and then the expression of the woman through the chairs on the left and then the woman the chairs to the right mm-hmm. is a pretty powerful contrast. It makes, and also, you know, with, if with ice busting at the seams and, uh, and these detention centers and with the pressure now from the new Congress uh, and the democratically, you know, held Congress, uh, you, you start to wonder if maybe there is going to be some break and, the, and there might be some more permeability uh in the in the issue so i i don't know i think there's a kind of hopeful dimension at least there's a playful element in this and if you can create a playful element with this topic given what's been going on um that's that's quite that's that's quite an achievement yeah yeah that's interesting um how we read the especially the boy's face a little bit differently i was sort of reading it as he's looking you know presumably to adults to someone else uh who you know, uh, hopefully knows what's going on or, yeah. you know, can lead and uh, as well. But I don't think those are completely um, uh-huh. 
yeah. opposite interpretations. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And in a way, I mean, I suppose to extend your interpretation, you could say that the, the gap above his head kind of between the bars might suggest, uh, as you said, maybe there is some wiggle room or flexibility there, uh, at least now that they are, you know, no longer um, right. uh, detained in the way they were before. Yeah. And a great photograph invites that kind of read, just like you said in the first one, you can just it keeps giving. So mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And and this particular version in black and white, I think, um does a number of things just with the juxtaposition of dark and light and um the light on the boy's face, you know, the darkness of the the bus bench, uh, the curve of the bench, that kind of thing. And it kind of amplifies um a lot of these things we've been pointing out. Shall we move on? Mm -hmm. Okay, our last segment we call the pick. And uh, this is where we ask what makes a photo a, a particularly good editorial choice or what gives it um, a particular kind of traction in the public space. And here's this week's photo. Uh, this photograph was um, is uh, made by Evelyn Hochstein um, for the Washington Post. Uh, and um, the caption reads, a security guard peers out of the visitor's entrance door at the Environmental Protection Agency building. Um, it's taken on December 21st, um, so it's a couple weeks old, and it reads also reads, hours ahead of a pot partial government shutdown. So this was right at the very beginning. And, you know, again, another photograph that gives so much. There's just so much, it just compositionally, you know, with these different elements playing off each other. Just to start off, I love the, the key, uh, and the lock, um, you know, it's it's quite a metaphor for this whole political morass. Yeah, and the juxtaposition of um, uh, the lock with the face of the worker inside, um, mm -hmm. the the kind of juxtaposition of inside outside, um, the uh, the way Hochstein has photographed the door, um, we're both seeing in and seeing what's going on. Uh, behind the door and also seeing the surfaces of the door and uh, you know it it's beat up and scratchy and textured and you can't really the glass isn't really clear um, you know the lock looks worn and well used um, and then of course you are able to see what's inside. And so then you're invited to think about the, another juxtaposition, which is not just the inside outside, but Trump and, and the, uh, the young security guard, the federal worker who's, you know, presumably uh, not working right now and at least going to be uh, affected by the shutdown. Yeah. There's so many layers to this. And by the way, um, not only talking about the, the photos being wonderful for all of the, detail but you know most of the pictures that you've seen or of the shutdown um show um garbage cans with the trash not collected or you know shuttered buildings so um or you hear about you know the the numbers of um uh of empl uh, of government employees that are out of work and statistics and you know you, you just don't see many pictures that even show a person let alone like you know have this much kind of emotion and you know suggestion to it yeah. And you get I mean, it's hard to photograph the absence of something. <laughs> you know, you can't really photograph people not coming to work unless yeah. you, you know, unless you, again, you know, come up with these sort of visual cliches. And so um, this is kind of that liminal moment where it's like, what's going to happen at midnight? Are we working or not? And 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 I think the, the photographer really nicely captures that. Um, you know, there's also I think the because of the way the photograph is uh, composed. There's a there's a, a a real combination of a gender, class, and race um, narrative being played out here in the juxtaposition between the image of the president and um, mm. and 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 the federal worker. So that um, the photo, because of the way it's framed with the lock in the upper left and the person in, in security guard in the lower right, really invites you to contemplate that person and that person's experience and how this may affect. Um, Right, this person's livelihood right before Christmas. You know, it invites you to think about all of these things. And then lurking behind, I mean, when when have we also seen Trump lurking behind women? Uh, you know, think about Hillary Clinton and the campaign. You know, Trump lurking behind there also, I think, um, you know, again, just 
amplifies our attention back on the subject of the photograph, which is, you know, what's going to happen to this particular worker. And mm-hmm. um, this worker doesn't know, right, at this point, what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. When it's this a little bit of a hostage with the clock and, the, and behind the glass. And yeah, there's a lot of pictures, too, of Trump lately um, that uh, show him like really out of focus or much more fragmented. I, I wrote a piece for CJR last year showing all the different ways that DC photographers have been doing these more impressionistic images of Trump and that the one characteristic that runs through them is fragmentation. And so here, you know, we're cer- certainly seeing that. Um, mm-hmm. The other thing I really think is great about this photograph, if you just think about the EPA for a second, um, because, and, and even in like the last week or two, it's almost like we've hit two years out and we've had a change in the, um, leadership at EPA, it's actually now getting more like, you know, the guy running it is actually more diabolical and less public. So all these stories are coming out now about environmental damage and public health and relaxation of toxic chemicals. And then when you look at the icy scratches on the glass and the reflection of the trees and that fiery spot, this kind of conjures like a, you know, a burn field or or a super fun site to me. So I think that's like kind of, again, maybe reading in, but not, well, I certainly am reading in, but it feels like it has that hook to it also. Yeah, that's interesting. That little burn, that moment, that little yellow spot, I hadn't really noticed that, but I think you're right that, yeah, that you can kind of see it's you know, a reflection of something, uh, right, happening there. Um, yeah, and, um, and and again, I think tied with the the kind of scratched up, worn out, you know, feeling of the door in the building might tie into that narrative you're making too about, you know, what is happening in the EPA as well. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot to think about. And um, each of these images, I think, does such a great job this week of pulling together, um, you know, uh, what we might very uh, simplistically call the style and the content or the aesthetics and the content um, of a news photo. They're they're all getting better. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I know. This bodes well for 2019, right? For all of us. <laughs> yeah. All right. So um, do we have um, any final party words for our folks this week? Well, Nick Oza there was in the our um, Border Wall Salon. And uh, on Monday, we'll be um, releasing the full replay uh, and a transcript of the audience chat and all of that. So that'll be on uh, Twitter and uh, on Facebook. Uh, and otherwise, look for us there and uh, also on uh, Instagram. And, uh, you know, we're just going to keep reading the pictures. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. And if you get a chance to take a look at those uh, reading the pictures salon uh, clips through the whole thing, definitely do it. It's really worthwhile. Um, and it's a great deep dive into a really important visual news story right now. Definitely. All take right. Care. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.